You may think of Burma as emerging into the light, embracing democratic reform and human rights. And commemorations took place today, marking the 25th anniversary of the launch of the pro-democracy movement. But there is another struggle in the north of the country that goes on ignored by the outside world. A vicious conflict in which a Muslim minority, the Rohingya, have become the victims of ethnic cleansing from Burma. Channel 4 News has investigated how tens of thousands of them, desperate to reach safe haven, are falling victim to criminal gangs and ending up as hostages in prison camps. Our Asia correspondent John Sparks has followed the exodus. On a windswept stretch of the Bangladesh coast, there is a ragged-looking settlement hidden amongst the trees. It's got a temporary-sounding name, the Shalampur Camp, but it's real enough, home to thousands of people who fled from neighboring Burma. The Rohingya Muslims fleeing vicious ethnic violence in their homeland. But few want to stay, however. They've come here to find themselves a ship. They want to escape, and these people are desperate. Inside a shabby looking shack, our team found one group waiting for instructions, waiting for a telephone call to say their boat to Malaysia is ready. Recruited by brokers, they've been waiting here for days. Some young, some old, all determined to leave. I'm Mohammed Zalia, 25 years old. Mohammed Hashim, I'm 16. Nurul Islam. Nurul Islam. I'm 65 years old. The brokers have charged them 200 pounds each but the true cost of this crossing will be much higher. Rohingya board vessels off Burma or Bangladesh with one basic aim. They want to be taken south, past Thailand and on to Malaysia, where they're permitted to stay. UN agencies think 35,000 people have attempted this journey in the last 12 months. And brokers told us there were several vessels used to transport Rohingya anchored in a Bangladeshi port. They're cargo ships that carry timber north and human beings on the return leg south. And they're not easy to identify. The names have been painted over. Our team had to film secretly. It's thought the men on board carry arms. And we saw a series of metal cages below deck. Rohingya, who've made the journey, told us it's where the women and children are held. The men are kept in the darkness below. We spoke to Mohammed, who spent 11 days in the bottom of a trafficker's ship. The passengers are packed in. Some ships carry more than a thousand people, and with little food or water, the voyage proves too much for some. The brokers promise passage to Malaysia. But the ships don't sail that far. There's business to be done in Thailand. Passengers are disembarked and held on Thai islands, like this one. It's called Taratau, and it's a Thai national park. But we discovered the southern half wasn't being used for recreation. It's an isolated spot. And according to our contacts in the Rohingya community, the site of several secret prisons where hundreds of people are held captive. We're getting closer now and we're all feeling pretty tense. It's been hard to find a boat that would take us here. Local people are scared of this place and we don't know what sort of reception we're going to get. We skirted the island's southern tip and saw smoke from a campfire rising through the trees. So we went in for a closer look. The area seemed deserted, 
but we weren't alone. It's clearly people there, though. We can hear the voices. We can hear people speaking. A man dressed in white emerged from the trees. He wasn't happy and told us to go. No, 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 no. Our driver said the man was a camp guard, and we decided to flee. It was a dangerous place to be. Former captives on the island told us they were held by armed guards. And to release them, relatives have to pay a ransom of around 1,500 pounds. Rafiq spent 19 terrifying days on Taratau Island. It's an experience he longs to forget. <laughs> Rafiq's father, Salamot, is not a wealthy man, but he did what he was told. He sold his cattle to free his son. Still, family members often try to negotiate directly with the traffickers. We've obtained an audio clip, recorded in May, of one man trying to release three loved ones. And if prisoners are unable to get the money to raise the ransom, well, they're sold as slave labor to tie fishing boats, we're told. Here's Mohammed. <laughs> Allegations of forced labor on Thai fishing boats have surfaced before, but the mass trafficking of Rohingya is cloaked in secrecy. However, we managed to meet a member of a trafficking gang. He called himself Bo and told us he was in charge of security on Taratau Island. I asked him whether he beats the prisoners. And how do the traffickers avoid the attention of the Thai authorities? Simple, he said. They've paid bribes to 10 different police and military units in the last four months. Back on the mainland, the local police chief denied that his officers take bribes. The police and the military here are well aware that Taratau Islands and others like it are used by human traffickers. You, you know that. There was a surprising development. As we continued our investigation, Thai police found a number of vessels and conducted a raid on the same spot we'd visited days earlier. They provided us with these pictures. In a jungle clearing, they found a multitude of anxious faces, huddled together in rudimentary huts and plastic-wrapped longhouses. Other prisoners were discovered in camps located further inland. Go, 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 go. A stop sign warned captives not to approach a nearby beach, while a guard tower loomed overhead. The traffickers' accounts were seized. Names of individual brokers are recorded here. 176 were plucked from the jungle and taken to this police station on the mainland. And they were tired and shaken by their ordeal. They treated us like dogs, said this man. Some told us they wanted to go to Australia, but their journey concluded with a trip to the local detention center. However, more Rohingya are sure to follow, for there is money to be made from their misery. John Sparks, Channel 4 News, Satun, Thailand.